We used to have a dream, if we can produce a clean electricity, then we can drive our electrical car. However, if you look at this, as of today, it's all gasoline cars. So it makes our job even impossible. We need a revolutionary something happen. The white thorium. And why MSR? Low pressure here, which give you more safety. We also end up with the high temperature here. We need high temperature. Because if you can go 900 degrees C, then we can use this energy to convert the CO2, which is not the waste at all. It's a, it's a raw material for our chemicals. In fact, we need the energy to convert them, but we need the high temperature. All right, so this is the work that's actually going on at NRL today. This is not a theoretical possibility. The ocean, or rivers as it's pointed out, is full of carbon dioxide and hydrogen. Um, there's lots of this everywhere on the planet. In fact, seven tenths of the Earth's surface is covered with water. We were looking at here at the electro electrolytic cation exchange module. This is on version three. Here's the skid that's used down at Naval, uh, Naval Air Station Key West. And what's going on is pretty simple. We're pumping electricity into this, this module up here. We're pulling carbonic acid, HCO3, out of the water. And by the way, per unit gallon, we're getting about a 92% removal from it. And then we're using standard electrolysis to crack water in order to make hydrogen. And what do you do with it? You string the carbon together with your hydrogen, and let's get into the fuels business. Here is the spectrum for JP5, which is the standard fuel used to run all the aircraft, a bit like a classic bell curve. And what you're seeing is the spectrum based upon carbon content of the individual hydrocarbons as you make this guy out of oil. So this is, this is anybody, Exxon, BP, Shell, whoever you want to name it, pulling petroleum out of the ground, fractionally distilling it, and making JP5 according to the mill spec. So what happens coming out of our machine down at Naval Air Station Key West? Well, now look at this. We've got a decay curve. Because we're manufacturing the fuel synthetically, we're able to control the carbon content and get a better concentration of the C10 hydrocarbons that we want than you can get from natural oil. So what this turns out is that the synthetically made aviation fuel actually has a higher energy density and is cleaner. It doesn't have the sulfur compounds in it, it doesn't have the nitrates in it. All of the other really nasty stuff that comes out of burning a fossil fuel we don't have and we have a better power density profile, making this stuff artificially. If you do just basic high school chemistry, if we can get hydrogen and CO2 from seawater, you have the fundamental building blocks right there for making any hydrocarbon fuel you want. Burn the fuel, it'll go into the air, it'll get absorbed in the ocean, pulled out of the ocean, turned into the fuel, burned and back into the air. So you, your car works beautifully just as today, but it's not running on oil, but it's still running the same fuel you have today. It's not a real airplane, I admit it. However, you're looking at it in the air, flying, on fuel that was made from seawater and electricity. What do you do about civilian aviation? Are we gonna to move to a world where only the highest of our elected officials fly around the world and the rest of us get to walk? Because there is no substitute for aviation fuel if you wanna get in the air. We're not gonna have solar powered aircraft, we're not gonna have hydrogen fuel powered aircraft anytime soon. We're looking at some total radical technology breakthrough if you wanna fly. The hydrocarbic acid, in the ocean is in equilibrium with the CO2 in the atmosphere. It's a very simple test. Seal up a fish tank, fill salt water in the bottom, don't let any air into it. Run your probes in there, pull carbonic acid out of the bottom, read your CO2 level in the air above it, and watch the CO2 level in the atmosphere drop. Every time you take a piece of carbon out of the ocean, it is the same as taking it out of the atmosphere. It will pass from the air into the water. So when you send an aircraft up in the air and it's running on fuel you made by taking carbonic acid out of the ocean, you have a virtual carbon cycle. You are not adding CO2 at all. It's carbon-free fuel that is carbon and burns in our existing engines.